All right, defensive tackle. And you mentioned you think this is one that's even more important. So uh, Quentin Jefferson, Nandama Kinsu, Matt Ioannidis, Shelby Harris, Al Woods, who we know the Browns have talked to, and Puna Ford. Um, when you look at those, who, who do you like from, from that group? So uh, Matt Ioannidis has been my favorite all the way through. Um, I think he'd be a phenomenal addition. There's a three tech and Dalvin Thompson is the one tech. Um, but them six are great. There's about another 10 guys who are free agents. So there is lots of choice. But those are the group that have really good pressure numbers. And that's something I, I really care about. Do you impact the quarterback in the pass game? As long as we can then just get average run stopping, that's fine. Can you disrupt the quarterback? And those guys all can. Quinton Jefferson has phenomenal numbers. Four in the uh, run game. But Dalvin Thomason can help with that. So you, they have Hurst, they have Hill, who they've signed, kind of rotational guys at, at this point in their career, guys you don't want to necessarily count on? I think looking at how they play at defensive tackle, um, I think you're going to see about six to 650 snaps for um, Tomlinson. And then you're probably going to have three guys all play around 450 snaps. And that's how the room's likely to break down. So Winfrey's one of those guys, probably Hill or Hurst, um, gets 450. And then you just need a guy that's going to come in and play 450. If you manage to go out and get Sam Matt Ioannidis, well, suddenly you've got two guys that are taking, say, 600, 650 snaps. And then that group behind them only needs to take 350 snaps each. So it, it means that you can put more pressure on your starters. Or you could put slightly less time on the starters' cards and then they're naturally going to be more efficient in the times they're out there because it's physically demanding snap after snap as a defensive tackle at that weight and size to cause pressure. The other thing is those guys allow the younger guys, you know, the, the Perry on Winf to develop. So you can, you can see where you're at with them, where you, you don't have to throw them in and, and get production from them right away, correct? Yeah, I have zero interest in probably ever drafting a defensive tackle again. Um, I've got no appetite to see it because if you're not taken in the first round, you probably have to have almost a red shirt year where you're going to play some, but you're not really that effective. Whereas give me two proven veterans who are starting and then give me two depth pieces behind that. Your Hurst, your Hill. Um, there is enough DTs out there. Chris Wormley, you could have on the cheap. You could get these guys cheap. And so give me four guys with solid NFL experience. They could all have four years plus in the league, prove they can do it, just bring them in, draft the edges, and then rotate and bring them along, and then just, yeah, add me, add me DTs that I know are good. Um, I don't want to be playing around in what we've had in the past, where it's like, hey, are these guys good? And you can take a guy in the second, third round, probably not going to do anything for you year one, so you, you've got to stick them in a rotation and struggle, whereas you go out and spend a bit of money, and you know what you're getting.